March 1918. As the First World War enters what will prove to be its final year, the coal collier USS Cyclops is traversing the West Indies through the area known as the Bermuda Triangle. The ship is due to be in Baltimore on March 13th. She would never arrive. Despite numerous ships searching for the Cyclops, she was never seen or heard from again. No wreckage, no debris, no flotsam, and no survivors were ever found. The fate of the Cyclops and her crew of 309 men remains a mystery to this day, and the loss of the ship still stands as the largest non-combat loss of life in the history of the United States Navy. In this video, I plan to cover the various theories about what happened to the Cyclops, from the more outlandish to the more realistic. To start off, we first need to look at the Cyclops itself as well as its journey up to its disappearance. The Cyclops was one of four Proteus-class coal colliers originally built in 1910 for the U.S. Navy. The Cyclops came in at around 540 feet long and weighing in at over 19,000 tons. In addition, she could hold up to nearly 11,000 tons of coal on board. At the time, colliers like Cyclops were essential to the fleets of the U.S. Navy since most major warships used coal-fired boilers, meaning they would need to be resupplied with coal often, and the addition of colliers to these fleets helped to extend the range they could travel without needing to stop in port. When the United States entered World War I in early 1917, the Cyclops was officially commissioned into the U.S. Navy, becoming the USS Cyclops. Things would be relatively uneventful for the ship as she traversed the Atlantic, resupplying U.S. and Allied vessels. That is, until her final, fateful voyage, which began in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Here, the Cyclops took on a cargo of nearly 11,000 tons of manganese ore before departing on February 15th. The ship then stopped in Bahia, Brazil, departing there on February 22nd. The ship was supposed to head straight for Baltimore, Maryland at this point, but ended up making an unplanned stop in Barbados. The stop occurred primarily due to concerns that the ship was overloaded. The normal maximum the ship was rated for was 8,000 tons, with the ability to carry up to 10,800 tons. With the ship carrying a near maximum load of manganese ore, the crew had noticed that the water line was above the load line of the vessel raising concerns about the buoyancy. In addition, the starboard engine of the Cyclops had cracked, rendering one of its cylinders inoperable. Despite these concerns, the ship was cleared to continue its journey to Baltimore with an expected arrival date of March 13th. March 13th came and went, and there was no sign of the Cyclops. A massive search was then initiated to find the missing ship. Despite the involvement of numerous ships, the search for the Cyclops ended in vain. No wreckage, no debris, no flotsam, and no survivors were ever found. The Cyclops and her crew of 309 had disappeared without a trace or indication about what happened. This would spawn numerous theories and speculation about what happened to the ship and her crew that persists until this day. Most are based in reality while others lend themselves to more outlandish explanations. The first theory I want to address is the more fantastical of the explanations for what happened to the Cyclops. That is, the Bermuda Triangle Theory. The Triangle is blamed for dozens if not hundreds of disappearances of ships and planes over the years, with vague and often supernatural occurrences leading to the disappearances. The Cyclops was traversing the Triangle when she disappeared. While there is no single supernatural phenomena blamed for the loss of the Cyclops, proponents of the Bermuda Triangle theory point to the fact that no wreckage was found, no distress signal was ever sent or received from the Cyclops, and there seems to be no trace of the ship at all. They also point to the fact that two sister ships of the Cyclops, the USS Proteus and USS Nereus, were also lost at sea in the Bermuda Triangle seemingly without a trace. Proteus and Nereus were lost in November and December 1941 respectively in the Bermuda Triangle and there has been no wreckage ever found or any definitive explanation for their loss either, fueling speculation of a supernatural cause to the loss of all three ships. 
While the supernatural may make for a more exciting story about the Cyclops and her sister ships, the likely explanations are far more grounded. The second theory about the Cyclops I want to look at is the possibility of having been sunk by a German U-boat. Given that the Cyclops disappeared at the height of the German U-boat campaign during World War I, this led to early speculation that the ship had likely been sunk by one of the German raiders. This theory is considered unlikely since the German Navy denied having sunk the ship, and records after the war indicate that there were no U-boats in the area of the Cyclops when she sunk. No U-boat ever claimed to have sunk the ship either. The U-boat theory was also suggested as a reason for the disappearance of the Cyclops' sister ships that also disappeared during World War II. But much like the Cyclops, there are no records of U-boats in the area of the Nereus or the Proteus when they disappeared, and no claims from any U-boats that they sunk either of those ships. So, if it wasn't U-boats and it wasn't UFOs, what is the most likely explanation for what sunk the Cyclops? The most likely theory about what happened to the Cyclops is that the ship suffered a massive structural failure secondary to being overloaded. As I mentioned earlier, the Cyclops was pushing to its absolute limit with a load of manganese ore that was nearly to its maximum tonnage that it could carry. This was so much of an issue that the ship diverted to Barbados before continuing its journey due to concerns over this heavy cargo load. This heavy load alone likely did not sink the Cyclops, though. There are two other factors that likely contributed to the Cyclops sinking. First is that the ship possibly had structural issues relating to the massive steel I-beams that ran the length of the ship. The Cyclops' sister ships have been noted with having major corrosion issues with their I-beams that threatened the structural integrity of the vessels. While the Cyclops was just eight years old at the time of its disappearance, it is possible that it too had corrosion damage that when put under strain with a heavy load could have led to the ship suffering a catastrophic structural failure that led to it breaking apart at sea and rapidly sinking. This I-beam corrosion is also believed to play a role in the disappearance of the Proteus and the Nereus, which are also lost while hauling heavy loads. The other factor that may have played a role is the fact that the Cyclops is believed to have been sailing through a violent storm around the time that she was lost. This storm was reported by other vessels in the area around the time that the Cyclops would have been traversing the area. This storm, when coupled with a ship that was overloaded and possibly suffering from compromised structural integrity, could have led to disaster for the Cyclops and her crew. The ship breaking up in a storm could have sunk so rapidly that there was little time to send out a distress call or to deploy any lifeboats. The violent nature of the waters in such a storm would have made survival incredibly difficult for anyone who wasn't taken down with the ship. Since it took several days, if not weeks, for anyone to begin the search for the ship, any debris or bodies from the Cyclops would have been spread for miles by the Gulf Stream or sunk to the bottom. In addition, without having any idea of where the Cyclops was last located, the search area would have been spread over thousands of square miles. Given the fact that a search wouldn't have the benefit of aircraft, GPS, or sonar, it should come as no surprise that nothing was ever located. Even today, no wreckage has ever been found. Even with the benefit of modern sonar, locating a shipwreck that's over 100 years old would be difficult when you account for its deterioration and the depth of the waters that it sits in. The area of the Bermuda Triangle has an average depth of around 10,000 feet. All these things would also would factor into the disappearance of the Proteus and the Nereus as well. Therefore, I believe that the combination of being overloaded, encountering a violent storm, and having potential structural issues led to a recipe for disaster for the Cyclops. The disappearance of the Cyclops has been a mystery for over 100 years. It likely will remain a mystery unless the wreckage of the ship is located, and even then, an exact cause will be difficult to determine. Regardless, the loss of 309 souls on board remains a tragedy irrelevant of what happened. So let me know in the comments if you agree with my conclusions and any other theories about what happened to the Cyclops. In the meantime, I'll see you on the next one.